So, hello everyone. We are in one minute from 3.10, so we can start getting back to our place to go on with the, move on with the, this session. So our next speaker will be Lorenzo Correa. He's an undergrad student from Federal University of Minas Gerais. And the title of his talk will be Mathematical Model of a Thermomagnetic Motor. And Lorenzo, I want you to the screen now. So okay. everyone can see you and hear you now. Mm, and I think you can start. I'll remove myself from the screen and you can start your talk. So good luck. OK, thank you. So I'm here to present the mathematical model of a thermomagnetic motor. Um, first of all, the uh, important thing to, to ask is why uh, uh, this is important. So the global energy demand is increasing. According to the World Energy Council, uh, more efficient ways to, go to make energy conversion systems is a way to supply this demand without increasing the energy production. One means to do that is to recover heat waste through industrial processes and convert it into a more useful type of energy, like electrical or mechanical. So the heat waste can be divided into three different categories. Uh, the high grade is for those that are above 650 degrees. The medium grade, which is for those between 650 and 230 degrees. And the low grade, for those that are under 230 degrees Celsius. However, recovering low grade heat waste is a low efficiency process and mostly made through solid state thermal energy harvesters. Uh, one of those are thermomagnetic motors. So this is one of the reasons they could be important and, and, uh, and uh, they could be more important going forward. So here we have four images that represent the thermomagnetic cycle of a motor, of a thermomagnetic motor. So in the first step, in the first image here, <clears throat> the magnetic material is in a low field region and it's cooled by the code reservoir TC until it reaches below its Curie temperature. Then it gets into a ferromagnetic phase and it's attracted to the higher field region as it's shown in figure B here. Uh, this only, it, it's important to say that this, this only happens if the spring force that is right here is greater than the magnetic force. In the image C, we have the opposite uh, process occurring where the magnetic material is then heated by a hot reservoir. And this hot reservoir could be provided by a uh, low grade heat waste. So it's heated and then it reaches uh, above its current temperature in a non-magnetic phase. This way, the spring force becomes greater than the magnetic force and it can be removed getting to, to the image D here. So it can be removed from the uh, high field region and then therefore restarting the cycle. This way, it's possible to convert the mechanical the uh, heat into mechanical energy using thermomagnetic motors. So the objective of this, uh, 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 like uh, the objective of my project is to develop a mathematical model for the heat transfer and the thermomagnetic phenomena of a motor to simulate the thermomagnetic cycle and to analyze the impact of the magnetic caloric effect in the system performance. For this, I had to make some uh, assumptions so the gadolinium was considered as the magnetic material used for the simulation. Uh, the, the heat transfer fluid chosen was a mixture of water and ethylenoglycol. And the gadolinium is structured as a porous meter to increase the heat transfer rate to the large heat transfer area. So we have a back bed of gadolinium, of gadolinium spheres. And that, that way the, the magnetic material enters in contact with the heat transfer fluid. So here I have an image of the motor concept. We have the spring that provides the elastic force. We have the magnetic circuits on both sides. 
that generates the magnetic field, the magnetic heat exchanger here, and linear bearings that restrains the movement of the magnetic heat exchanger to one dimension. So it only goes in and out of the field region. This is a circular uh, circuit. So the both both horizontal directions uh, are uh, symmetric, and the only considered dimension is the x axis here, which is the vertical axis. So the movement is vertical, and and this is how it works. The 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 motor for the simulation. <clears throat> so the magnetic field is generated by a nested Halbach cylinder, as shown in in this figure. So three cylinders, and it's the the field is generated in the green region. This figure on the right shows how the magnetic field is di distributed inside the cylinder according to the position. The zero position here is the middle of the the cylinders, and as we go vertically upwards the field goes down and it's symmetric so when we go below also it's also the field goes down and this here uh this equation is the equation that generates this curve it's the numerical approximation of the field uh we have so for the heat transfer model inside this motor first thing that was considered was that the heat transfer is one dimensional, which is parallel to the flow, so it's vertical, like the movement too. Also, the fluid and the solid, they have couple energy equations, and this is, uh, and we have to do this because the fluid and the solid, they they uh, they have contact, so they they exchange heat. And third, which is also important is that within the solid, since the spheres are so small and they have so low contact area, uh, we consider no actual transfer. So the, the solid phase only transfer heat with, uh, with the fluid phase while the fluid has the advective and, con uh, and diffusive terms. So here in the fluid energy equation, we have the first term which is the energy inside the volume, and the second term, which is then the energy that crosses the bodies of the volume. This is this must be equal to the third, which is the coupling term, so the energy that it's change, the exchanges, that it exchanges with the solid. Uh, the fourth term here is regarding the diffuse and advective term of the fluid. And the fifth term, the fifth term in this equation is the generation of heat by friction. The solid energy equation, since we don't have uh, actual transfer, is only dependent on the fluid uh, energy. So its only term is the, the coupling term, the fluid equation. And finally, to, def to define the losses of uh, or the loss of pressure, so we can define the the heat generated by friction, I uh, use the Egum equation with the McDonald's coefficients for porous media. So as described over here. For the position model, uh, so the first thing that was important was that uh, kinetical factors were disconsidered. So the position at each time was always evaluated by generating equilibrium between the magnetic force and the elastic force. So the magnetic force is as described in this equation and the elastic force is described as in this equation too. So during the heating process, we have the movement of the magnetic material going outwards the, the high free region. So the movement happens when the elastic force uh, overcomes the magnetic force. And during the cooling process is the opposite. So it goes inwards to the to the high free region, and the movement happens when the elastic force is lower than the magnetic force. And so, as uh, connective factors were disconsidered, this movement had to be iterative. So uh, at each time step, the forces were evaluated, and if this equilibrium was uh, unmade, uh, the the magnetic material is moved one millimeter, and then the forces are recalculated to see 
if the equilibrium is remade. So, and if it's not, it moves one, one, one more millimeter, and that's the way the, the position can be evaluated. So for the numerical implementation, uh, the Python programming language was used uh, for the finite volume method. To evaluate the advective and diffusive terms, uh, I used the weighted upstream differentiating scheme, WDS. And as the WDS only generates, uh, it only makes one fluid volume actuate with the, uh, it only interacts with the right before and the right after uh, volumes. So this generates a tridiagonal matrix and it could be solved using the tridiagonal matrix algorithm. The boundary conditions for the simulation were that in the uh, first part, like the most uh, vertical volume, the mass, there was a mass inlet with fixed temperature for the first volume. So uh, 40 degrees Celsius for the heating process and zero degrees Celsius for the cooling process. And in the, in the other end, there was an advective mass outlet. And also the convergent conditions used for the simulation was that for each time step, we have this sum, which represents uh, the sum of each of the, the difference of the temperatures for each volume for the K iteration and the prior iteration must be below uh, uh, 0 0.0001. And for a cycle, we have many time steps. So we do the same sum we do for each time step, but we do for all the time steps. So we can convert a cycle when the sum for each volume in each time step for when the error for the volume in each volume and each time steps is below 0 0.1. The volume is matched used was 1000 volumes and the time step is from 1000 of a second. So the performance metrics, wait, wait one second. The performance metrics for the motor in the simulations are the load loss calculated using the Ergen equation as already described the total produced power, which is evaluated by the minimum and maximum elastic forces, uh, uh, elastic energy divided by the time. So uh, also the pump power, which is using, which is calculated using the load loss. And the last performance metric is the net power, which is the produced power minus the pump power. So the simulations, had so two cases, two simulations were made using different parameters. So first we have the constant parameters between them, the heat, the temperature of the hot flow at 40 degrees, cold flow at zero degrees, sphere diameter at 0 0.5 millimeter, heat exchange diameter at 16 millimeters, gadolinium at specific mass, ethylene glycol and water ratio, and the porosity of the uh, packed sphere porous medium. But the three different parameters were the elastic constant of the spring used, the heat exchanger length, and the mass flow rate. And this is this is used because then we can evaluate what these parameters do uh, regarding the the motor uh, performance. So here we have for the first case we have this graph over here which describes the position of the motor uh, during the time. So this is the whole simulation time. And what happens here is the first part, we have this plateau in which it, uh, the simulation can discover what is the, the position where the cycle ends. So when the, when the heat process ends, <clears throat> how far from the middle of the cylinder the uh, the magnetic material is, and in this uh, let me check my mouse here. So in this small plateau over here, this this lower plateau, we have the same, but for the cooling process. So we cool and we uh, and then we keep the temperature. We keep the the cold flow to see where it stabilizes, and it stabilizes in this position. So we get this position, 
And once we have both positions, we can then proceed to make uh, the, the real cycle, which is to get, so we have the heating process and the heating process is ended once that temperature, when once that position reach, is reached, and then it starts the cooling process. And once the, the lower position is reached, it also re-triggers the heating process. So therefore we can make, we can have the cycles that are based that have uh, the that have the movement limited by the position of the heat exchanger. So looking at so then the three cycles were made and the third it already reached a developed state. So looking at the third cycle, we can see it uh, zooming at this cycle. We can see the first part of the heating, which uh, leads to a very small increase of position. And then in the second part, we have this gap over here. So this is when the temperature, it reaches above the equilibrium temperature, and then it loses its magnetic properties. Therefore, it moves out uh, in one, in almost only one time step. After this, the cooling process is triggered and it starts and starts cooling really slowly. Then it has this big gap, which is much smaller than the first one, but it's also a gap where it, it's outside the high field region and it gets inside uh, in, uh, fastly. And then it, for the last part, is a much, smooth, uh, a much smoother, uh, so the last part is a much smoother uh, curve. We can see here that the positions go from uh, minus than 0 0.40 uh, millimeters up to 120 millimeters. And the time taken for the cycle is almost 0 0.7 seconds. So for this case, the second case, we can do the same thing. We also generate the plateaus here. And then we have the, the three cycles. Uh, these three cycles, it's important that they are not established, but by the convergent condition, uh, it converges in three cycles for these two cages. It's a coincidence, it's not uh, established. So zooming in, we can have the same four. So first in the start of the heating process, the position changes really slowly. Then it has a abrupt change of, of position. Then it, then it has an abrupt, then when we start cooling, it has this abrupt change also. And then the smoothing of the curve. And we see that in case two, we have the position varying from almost uh, 45 mil. It starts at 45 millimeters and it goes up to 120. And the timing is from zero to 0 0.4 seconds. So it's a shorter length cycle, but it's also uh, uh, it also goes through a shorter distance. So then we can compare with cycle time. So as we already have seen, the first case has a shorter time. It produces more energy. It, it, the first case has a longer time, I'm sorry. It produces more energy. It has a lower pump and therefore it has a higher net uh, produced energy. So the pump power is close for both cases. The short length presented the shorter cycle. Yes, this also has the shorter length. Uh, the greater length provided a, a higher magnetic force as we can see by the fact that it has the, the greater distances. So it has a higher elastic force too. And therefore, as shown by the, the net uh, power, the high magnetic force were more relevant to improve the net power than the shorter cycles in case two. Uh, so we also did the, the first simulations were made without the magnetic caloric effect and we did them with the magnetic color effect to, to show the difference in results. So these are the same results. So the case two had uh, really near results, almost no difference. And the first case had a little more different results, but also they were really close. So the error we get uh, when comparing both cases, the percentual error is described over here. So it's less than 10% for every one of the performance evaluations. 
So the conclusions were that this model was su successfully implemented, allowing the analysis of the pump power and the produced power from in both cases and for a thermomagnetic motor in general. Um, the position of the heat exchange of the heat exchange provided important information for the cycle. So the cycle we have there, <clears throat> the fact that the there was that spike is really interesting, that spike in the position, and also the fact that during the heat, the heating process and the cooling process, these are different. So one way to define the starting and position was the one that we chose, which was when we have the, which was to maintain the cooled and the hot stream for a determined time, but we could also search for other ways to, to define the starting and positions so that we can maybe get shorter cycles that generate more power because they're shorter and they don't have the, the, the parts the the parts where the heating and the cooling generates less a movement because the movement after all is what gets the uh, the the power in the in the system and at last the comparison between simulations with and without the magnetic caloric effect show that this phenomena uh, presents low impact and therefore the results are really close one to, to the other. So acknowledgements to the to the Department of Mechanical Engineering from UFMG, uh, so the also to the Federal University of Minas Gerais, the PRP key and the CNP key, because there was a scholarship, uh, some funds for this project. So here are some references. And at last, thank you for your time. Here's my mail and here's the website from the laboratory if any of you also, uh, want to check it out uh, later. Okay, Lorenzo, thank you for your talk. It was a very nice talk. Uh, we have time for questions. I'll check the, the chat to see if there's any. There's one from Paula. Can we read the screen? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah. So, uh, so do you guys will build the motor? So yes, it's one of the intentions to build this motor. Uh, many of the parameters that were decided was based on the fact that these were resources that were already available. So the simulation has the intention to to generate a working motor that we can build and test and compare later. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we, we don't have any more questions in the chat. I have one. Uh, you consider a, a cylinder in order to generate the magnetic field. Have you considered any other shape to, uh, instead of the cylinder, to generate the magnetic field in your mathematical model? So, actually, no. The Halbach cylinder is one of these resources that are that are available. So since the magnetic part and, and uh, the magnets are some of the most expensive resources for the for building the motor, we chose to use them for the simulation and not try other uh, other configurations to generate the field. Okay. But yeah, other fields could generate very different results. So. Thank you again, Lorenzo, for your nice talk. Feel clapped for the, the talk. And we we have a few minutes again for the next the next talk. It should be around seven minutes. So uh, we we'll wait a few minutes so we start on schedule. So I'll I'll remove you from the screen so you don't be here. So excuse me, Lorenzo. Thank you. So the next talk will be Henrique, so we will we'll wait around six minutes to start it, so we will be back in five minutes. I'll remove myself on the screen. <laughs>